Good morning. Thank you for joining us again for our time of prayer, worship, and the Word. Let me read Ephesians chapter 2 as we look at God is kind. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Lord, we thank you for your mercy, Lord God, that has been extended to us even when we did not know it, even when we did not ask for it, even when we were not ready to uh, turn around towards you. Your mercy is rich, your mercy is unlimited, and your love has, uh, has been with us for all of our lives. Thank you, Lord God, for your amazing kindness. Let it mark us, let us experience it, Lord, in greater ways. And Lord, Give us the ability even to share it to a world that doesn't know how kind you truly are. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us worship God. See what love the Father has for us And He breathed life in what once was dust and no one love lavished on us that his son would give his life to us we receive your love for us we believe it it's power This is love that Jesus died for us Put our guilt and shame upon the cross The greater love that God has shown to us Still in our sin it made a way sin has been defeated oh death where is your sin the love of our Messiah has won our victory the power of your love we sing Lord we receive the love that bought our freedom the love of Christ our King our sin has been defeated oh death where is your sin the love of our messiah has won our victory the power of your love we sing lord we receive the love that bought our freedom the love of christ our king our sin has been defeated oh death where is your sting the love of our messiah has won our victory the power of your love we sing lord we receive the love that bought our freedom the love of christ our king for love. 
Lord for your presence with us Lord may we see more and more of your kindness may we grow in our experience of your kindness and may we be channels of your kindness especially to others who are around us always in Jesus name Amen Ephesians chapter 2 I'll read starting with verse 1 all the way to verse 10 and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with Him, seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages He might show the immeasurable riches of His grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works. So no one may boast. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Many years ago, when my wife and I moved to Iloilo to pastor a very young, growing church, around uh, 1991. It was a very young church, mostly students. There, were, there was a, one grandmother, four other people waiting for a job, my wife and myself, and the rest were all students, about 30 to 40 uh, people in attendance. To make the, lo the, to make the place we, wor we held our worship look better and feel better, we rented plants during our worship for our worship services. One of the us ushers, a student, would take care of getting the plants just a few meters away from, from the hall we were meeting and then returned it after the service. Uh, because I was due, I kept forgetting for a season, I kept forgetting to bring the money to pay for the plants. And every time... I would remember, I would go to him. Many times I would ask him, how much do you have to pay? Or here's the money to pay for the plants. He would refuse and say, it's already been taken care of. It's been paid already. He paid for it in that sense. So I really thought in the beginning, he was probably one of our more uh, well-off students because he, could, uh, uh, he had the opportunity or he took the chance to pay for the plants many times. Only to find out months later that every time he paid for the plants, he actually walked home because he no longer had the money for transportation. What an amazing love for God and love for the church. The kindness he extended to the church cost him dearly. He literally had to go the extra mile to extend this simple kindness to the church multiple times. Kindness is the sincere and voluntary use of one's time, talent, and resources to better the lives of others or one's own life 
and a world through genuine acts of love, compassion, generosity, and service. Moreover, kindness involves a choice. This chapter in Ephesians le reads like a story. In a sense, the story starts with one of the main characters, man, you and I, mired in sin by choice, living the rebellious life, rejecting the sovereign or God who has done everything for our benefit and blessing. Man decides to follow the ultimate desire of his heart, the pleasures, of the, the pleasures that this world promises and lies about and many times leaves people empty. Yet despite this, despite man's rebellion, despite man's choice to take the path of sin, verse 4 says, But God being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with Him, seated us with, the, with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Then verse 7, look at this. Listen to this. So that in the coming ages He might show the immeasurable riches of His grace in kindness towards us, in Christ Jesus. What an amazing, kind God we serve and relate to. In this scripture verses, the kindness of God shows us a few more things about God. It's easy to say, yes, God is kind. But what, how did this kindness come to us? How, what happened? Or how did the kindness affect us? Or how did the kindness uh, benefit us or what else how did God get or uh, get uh, what did God have to pay to get his kindness to influence us and benefit us let's look at a few things the first thing is the kindness of God is priceless priceless not because nobody priced it but because nobody could afford it the kindness of God is priceless. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved and raised us up with Him and seated us with Him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Kind, God's kindness towards us is free. We don't have to pay anything, but it cost Him a price He alone could afford to pay. Remember, it was our decision to rebel and live in sin. Man was the rebel, the mocker, the crucifier of Christ. In the midst of that, even without a hint of us changing or wanting or desiring a change of heart, God still sent Jesus, the only possible sacrifice for our sins. Many times, kindness is free to the recipient, but it will always demand an expensive payment from the giver. Just like the story I shared with you about the plants that our church in Iloilo enjoyed for a year or so. The blessing was, uh, it, it gave the church a blessing, a better atmosphere for worship, but to my friend, it cost him time money, and effort. The kindness of God is life-changing and literally out of this world because it did not demand payment from us. Everything was paid by God. We could not afford it anyway if we wanted to pay for it. Sometimes our acts of kindness in our world is to get a win-win situation for a difficult situation. We extend kindness to one party so that we no longer have to live through the pain of demanding something we desire. With our God, His kindness was not a win-win situation. He would have to give and sacrifice His only Son so you and I could win, experience, and receive the blessing of reconciliation and forgiveness with Him. Since we could never afford to pay for our sins, even if we wanted to. Christ instead gave us His kindness 
a gift we are to simply receive. That is truly an amazing, out-of-this-world kindness extended and given to us. Secondly, the kindness of God did not turn the blind eye to sin. Instead, it was established in justice and through justice. Verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of work, so no one may boast. The kindness of God is not our work, not our doing. In fact, we can do uh, we cannot do anything to earn it or gain it. But God did the work. He did the right work. He did the just work. Many have this picture of that God's love and grace and kindness will just turn a blind eye to our sin and to the sin of the world. Just gloss over it. Just cover it. Just ignore it totally. Or just forgive and forget. But God's love and kindness cannot be done at the expense of justice. So in His kindness, God through Christ took the penalty and payment for all our sin. The penalty, the penalty for all us, our sin was completely paid for on the cross. God did not just gloss over sin. God did not just ignore sin. God confronted sin, paid for it. So we can experience the forgiveness of sin, reconciliation with God, and the blessings of God. Justice was completed on the cross. Kindness then was extended to us. Think about this. Do you have a recognition or a gift taken back from you because it was found out that you don't deserve it? Or is there, is there someone you know who is wrongly, who was wrongly recognized and you think should be stripped of a certain recognition because he doesn't deserve it? With Christ, his kindness can never be taken away from us even in the midst of our sin because he has totally paid all the penalty and demands for our sins. No one can take His forgiveness away from us. It has been totally paid for. No one can take the blessings of God away from us. It has been totally paid. No one can take our status our ch as children of God. It has been totally paid. No one can, can change the kindness of God to judgment toward us. It has been completely given and totally paid for. The amazing, immeasurable, unlimited kindness of our God. Lastly, the kindness of God is immeasurable, unlimited, always abundant. Verse 7, so that in the coming age He might show the immeasurable riches of His grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Kindness of God never runs out. He is rich in mercy. It's new every morning, the scripture says. He has great love. He, he, his great love for us is, is unconditional and unlimited. The scripture says nothing can separate us from the love of God. No one, no sin is unforgivable. No one is beyond redemption. No one is hopeless. No one is a hopeless case. No one is in a hopeless case. No one is useless. No one is beyond God's blessing, God's purpose, and God's love. Romans chapter 2 verse 4 says, Or do you show contempt for the riches of His kindness, forbearance and patience, not realizing that the kindness or the God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance. As we close, let us receive, embrace, and live in the kindness of God. Let us worship God again and be grateful for His kindness. 
Our sin has been defeated. Oh, death, where is your sting? The love of for Messiah has won our victory. The power of your love, we sing, Lord, we receive. The love that bought our freedom, the love of Christ our King. We receive it, we receive it, we receive it, your love for us. We believe in it, we believe in it, we believe it, it's powerful. As we close, let me proclaim the scripture that we all know, we always hear, that shows us the kindness of God and expresses the will and the grace of God's kindness to us. Numbers chapter 6. God bless you and keep you. God smile on you and gift you. God look you full in the face and make you prosper. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing kindness. May we continue to live under your kindness and may we be turned, equipped, made to be an instrument of your kindness to a world that needs it. In Jesus' name, amen.